Uh, right over left. No, left over right. Left over right. Okay. Power stance. <laughs> ceremony for 9-11. On September 11, 2001, 2,977 people lost their lives and another 6,000 people were injured during the attacks at the World Trade Center in New York, the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia, and on United Airlines Flight 93 near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Of those who lost their lives, 343 were New York City firefighters, 23 were New York City police officers, 37 were New York Port Authority officers, and 8 were children. Today, 20 years following that horrific day, joining with the other schools in Forsyth County and with countless ceremonies throughout the United States, we remember the dead and injured especially the valor of those brave men and women that went into the buildings to save others. And those lives and families were forever changed by the events of September 11, 2001. Today we will hear stories from a New York resident, Mr. Tom Neighbor, an airline pilot at the time, Captain Greg Salome, first responders, Ms. Janice Kochevar and Mr. Greg Early, former firefighters, and Deputy John Maloney, who is our school resource officer. We will then honor those who lost their lives through a special ceremony of remembrance. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. Neighbor, Captain Salome, Ms. Kochevar, Mr. Erdley, and Deputy Maloney to the podium. Good morning, everyone and welcome to our distinguished guests. I grew up about 30 miles east of, Mid of Midtown Manhattan and Lower Manhattan and still lived there during the 9-11 attacks. Although I was not in Lower Manhattan on that morning of this tragedy, I heard stories from many who were there. Nearly all of the stories had one thing in common. As they described the heroic acts of our first responders, were running towards the towers while others were fleeing and running for their lives. The bravery, the selflessness, and the heroism still amazes me to this day. Paul, a dear friend of my wife and I, was among those first responders. During the rescue efforts that morning, Paul narrowly escaped the collapse of the North Tower. I received this Never Forget t-shirt that I'm wearing for making a donation to Paul's Firehouse a couple weeks after the tragedy. All the proceeds went to the families of our fallen heroes. Although Paul passed away in 2016 to cancer-related illness as a result of spending time on the pile, the pile is what they call the mountain of debris where the rescue efforts took place at Ground Zero, I will always remember him and his acts of heroism. Today, I wear this shirt in honor of Paul and all of the others to let them know that we will never forget.
20 years ago, I was a uh, airline captain, and I happened to be home. Well, that's like three on the route here, too. It's a Tuesday. Well, much like folks, I just finished a three-day trip the night before. I was in my basement, uh, just about three miles away from the basement. When the phone rang, there was my father. He called and asked if I was okay. And uh, his voice was a little strange. I said, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Are you watching TV? I said, well, that's all, but I'm not paying attention to it. He says, I'm going to hang up on the TV. And I did. And obviously, we all remember the imagery on TV. And I was dumbfounded as to what had happened. Being an airline pilot in uh, New York many, many times, there's no way that could happen. I asked him. And as the storyline developed, it became obvious what was going to occur. Between that morning and the early mid afternoon, I received over 40 phone calls. People who were wanting to know if I was okay. Uh, back then, you know, our phones were still not on the wall. That's why it's getting really close to it. But what was amazing as a pilot is what the air traffic control system did in a short period of time. The first hour was hit at 8.46. At 9.42, the FAA ordered all aircraft to be grounded. 1216, the last airplane landed. That condensed amount of time, the ATC air traffic control folks did a phenomenal job of managing those airplanes. But what they don't understand, a lot of people don't understand, is there were a lot of airplanes in the air that were not in communication with air traffic control, general aviation, for example. So there were a lot of airplanes still in the air, but uh, all aircraft in communication with air traffic control. Those come across from the Atlantic, across the Atlantic from Europe, so we're not in the position. We're not in the position. So we have to come back. Um, I went outside sometime in the uh, mid morning, maybe around 11, 11 30. We live underneath the arrival path, or at least the arrival path over in Hartsville. And I looked up. The amount of airplanes in the trail going to Atlanta Hartsville was phenomenal. It was something I'd ever seen in all 30 some years of the airline pilot. So back then, uh, even though I was not in the air, I could feel what all those pilots in the air were going through. They were confused. They did not understand what had happened. Their traffic control did not have time to explain to each pilot what was going on. They were ordered to find a fix, go to a holding pattern, and each other. And you had the logistics issue of those people, those airplanes being put into an airport. Food, lodging, all the needs that uh, So reflecting back on that day, it was, uh, it was a tough uh, field again for uh, those folks that were directly involved, as well as the crew members that were uh, here. So it's good to remember all the players that were involved in that day. Again, for me, as an airline pilot, it was, uh, it was, it was tough to uh, back on. So uh, with that, I thank you. Good morning. First, I'd like to say thank you to everybody that came out today to help us honor the men and women that were lost in that day. Um, I started off as a volunteer fireman in my small town, and um, I fell in love with it instantly and knew that that was a passion. And when I moved down to Georgia, uh, the first thing I did was I got a teaching contract, so obviously I was uh, obliged to uphold that. But I applied for the fire department in Clayton County in July of 2001. And I was in the middle of the hiring process. And um, I'll forget, I was in the gym. And a student came up and said, uh, hey, coach, I won't believe this, but uh, the plane just hit one of the towers. So I flexed. So I went into my office and I turned on the TV just in time to see the second plane actually strike. And I watched in awe. I couldn't, I just couldn't fathom what was actually going on. It was actually very surreal. Um, what, what I realized as I watched all those men and women and trying to help and run, save everybody, is that I knew that I was now part of a very, very elite group of people and that that was my calling. And I knew right then and there that that was it. Um, that I had made the right decision. Um, I got hired in October of 2001 and I'm just, 
beaming with pride the fact again like i said um it, it is an amazing group of people that risk their lives so selflessly to save people that they didn't even know and um we should never forget because these heroes are still out here today some of them are angels now uh, but we still currently have heroes out there just for these types of occasions because we're the ones that are going to be running in and, and saving lives and taking care of business. And so um, I am very honored that we are doing this today in remembrance of that. Hi, I'm Chief Greg Irby. Uh, my recollection from that day, I just came off a 24-hour shift over at Cherokee County Fire Department. Uh, came home like I usually do, like both my kids were in school, my wife was off at work. I went and grabbed myself a bowl of cereal, sat down in front of the couch, and turned the news on. At that point, all I could see was fire in the South Tower. And at that point, I said, okay, all right, so I've been, I'm a New York resident, lived there for 21 years before I moved down to Georgia, been in those towers, you know, a dozen times. And I said, okay, the firemen, what they're going to do is they're going to get in there, they're going to go on up to the, you know, the upper floors, 80, 90 floors, and put the fire out. Because that's what we do. I never in a million years would have thought that it was a terrorist attack. So as I'm watching, I'm kind of just on the game playing, what would I do if I was there? And I'm like, I, I felt bad because those guys were, were no longer be able to use the elevators. They were going to have to climb every stair to get to where that fire was. But I had no doubt that those firemen were going to do their job. Because that's what they were trained to do. And as I sat there and watched, then all of a sudden, the second plane came and hit, the, and hit the, the North Tower. Things changed at that point. That's when we realized that we were under attack. Things really hit home for me at that point. I could say for about 15 minutes, I was in fear. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I should go get my kids from school, if I should go get my wife at work, should I go back to my fire department? I've got several firefighter friends who live in New York that are part of New York, uh, New York City Fire Department. I tried to get on the phone. The people that were there, Greg, you could test this. The phones didn't work. Constant busy city. I literally sat there and I was paralyzed for 15 minutes, not knowing what to do. Because I knew that the people, the public safety people up in New York City were going to do their job no matter what. Because that's what public safety people do. We don't get a choice out there that it's a thunderstorm or a lightning storm or it's a terrorist attack or it's a really hot day. We don't get a choice of what we do. There's a job to be done and we're going to do it no matter what cost. And unfortunately that day there was a major cost. But those firefighters, those police officers, those EMS workers, those transit authority workers and the good Samaritans out there saved thousands and thousands and thousands of lives and they risked theirs and I don't think any one of those did it because they wanted to be a hero they did it because that was their job and our profession is, is truly a calling for what we do and I am proud and honored to be a member of the fire department of public safety for over the last 30, 33 years and I'm truly proud. And that's the reason why I'm so grateful to be here at Alliance Academy to be able to see these young men and women really work towards their dream. And their dream is to do what we're doing. And I think that's a great thing that's very admirable for them. Um, all our local Forsyth County officials, um, I was a Forsyth County volunteer for years, and I'm just so glad that I made the decision to do what I, what I did. And I'm very grateful for that. One lesson I did learn, and I tell my kids all the time, after that 15 minutes of fear, I said I will never live in fear again in my life. I'm going to live every day like it's my last, honoring those people from New York City. Over the last couple of years, we've been under some stressful times, but I refuse to live in fear. I'm living every day like it's my last, because tomorrow's not promised. It is not promised. So make sure when you go home tonight, you give your loved ones a little extra hug and a kiss, your kids, your wife, or you reach out to your parents or estranged friends because you never know what's going to happen. Thank you very much.
know there's certain things in life that, that catch you and uh, almost take a picture and put it in your brain. It's almost like a picture moment. And some things would be great. Some of those pictures in my mind are great. Um, the moon landing, believe it or not, I can remember the moon landing. Uh, July of, of, of July 20th of 69, I remember watching that with my parents on television. I was young, but I, it's, it's ingrained. I, I remember this almost like a picture being taken. It's stored in your brain. Um, there's some great moments uh, uh, of things that, that that I remember. I remember uh, I remember Hank Aaron hitting his, his 715 home run. Watching that with my father. You know, I remember that moment like it was yesterday. I remember uh, I remember my uh, my children being born. You know, just that moment in time that, that, that it, it almost, you can almost, it's almost like a, a grainy uh, color picture, but I can remember it. I see it. I can close my eyes and see those moments. I also remember some bad moments. I remember the, the, my parents passing away and being there at that moment in time. I remember my brother going off to Vietnam War. I remember when he left for boot camp. Um, those memories are, are, are stuck. They're there. I remember the Challenger uh, space shuttle blowing up. You know, I, I remember exactly where I was sitting in, in, in the, the kitchen at my mom and dad's again with my parents watching that and in, in disbelief of what I just saw. And then September 11th, um, that, that moment in time. And, and you know, we, we September 11th will never be known as anything else other than the, the terrorist attacks. When we think of September 11th, date. You know, the others are, you, you have to look up those dates, but you remember the act, you remember the moment in time. But September 11th is a date that is stuck in our brains. And I remember exactly where I was. I remember watching, uh, hearing about the, uh, the first plane in the first tower. And I thought, well, it was, maybe it was an accident. Maybe it was, um, maybe it was a, uh, a pilot had a heart attack or some reason probably have flown into the tower accidentally. So we turned on the television and you're sitting there watching it as that second tower or the second uh, airliner flew into the second tower. And you realize this wasn't, this is not an accident. This is real. This is happening. And, you, and then you started paying attention. Everything stopped at that moment in time watching everything. At that time, uh, I was a reserve officer. I, I had switched over to the engineering department at Alpharetta. I'm still a, uh, a police officer, but I switched up the engineering department. And that next day after that, that calling in your heart, uh, wanting to go back to full service, called the chief in order to find out what I need to do to go back full service with the department. Because of September 11th, that calling itself. And, and the other thing I remember about September 11th, uh, that whole day just being glued to the television and every little report find out what else was going on. And then you heard about the Pentagon being uh, struck by another airplane. And then the airplane being taken down by the uh, by the brave people on that on the, on the plane itself uh, that averted that plane from uh, crashing to another, uh, in, into the cabin. Um, but the calling inside my heart to go back full service, you know, what do I gotta do? And the other thing I remember as far as all that goes is the our country coming together as one. Everybody coming together as one. As a group of people, it didn't matter, it didn't matter the color of our skin, it didn't matter where we were from, we were a country. We were, we were together to try to find out what happened and what we can do to help others as one group, as one nation. Um, it forever changed me, it forever changed everybody that was a part of that. You being young, as you guys grow up, you'll have those moments in time. Uh, here, uh, as you guys grow older, you'll have those picture moments in time that will forever be ingrained in you. Some of them are going to be good, some of them are going to be bad. Uh, but it will affect you and it will help you grow into men into, into and women. It will help you grow into, um, and, and looking at you, I see that you're, you have a call have that calling to, to serve, and um, I applaud you for that, and I'm thankful to be here with you, I'm thankful to have that opportunity.
to serve me is a part of this great nation. Thank you guys very much. Thank you to all who shared your stories this morning. Students, many, I, I don't think any of you were born in 2001. I would encourage you to talk with your families, your parents, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles about 9-11 and what they experienced that day. So it might be something to talk with them about tonight if you've not read that so. It was a very emotional day for everyone and as Deputy Maloney said, affected every single person throughout the world. Today, in honor of Patriot Day, along with the other Forsyth County schools, we will plant a red maple tree to honor the lives lost. In October 2001, a severely damaged tree was discovered at Ground Zero with snapped roots and burned and broken branches. The tree was removed from the rubble and placed in the care of the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation. After its recovery and re rehabilitation, the tree was returned to the 9-11 Memorial in New York in 2010. New, smooth limbs extended from the gnarled stumps, creating a visible demarcation between the tree's past and present. Today, the tree stands as a living reminder of resilience, survival, and rebirth. The red maple we plant today symbolizes that same fortitude and resilience and serves as a reminder of the work of our nation in the face of this unimaginable tragedy. To begin this part of the ceremony, we invite, we invite Division Chief Shivers to the podium, who along with the members of the Forsyth County Fire Department Honors Guard to signal the last alarm to honor those brave souls that lost their lives saving others. After this is finished, we invite members of our aerospace, criminal justice, law, healthcare, and first responder pathways to plant our tree. We will then close with a moment of reflection signal, signaled by the plane of paths.